Welcome, my name is Paul Ellison and I'd like to put together a screencast that talks about youth voices but through the lens of my own exploration of social media. Really what the subtitle of this uh, screencast would be is something like um, now that uh, we understand how I'm learning how can I bring that into the classroom? Since about 2003, uh, teachers uh, in the New York City Writing Project and the National Writing Project in general, Susan Ettenheim and Chris Sloan in particular, have been working to build this site with me. And what this screencast is about is um, why? Why do we want kids to work in a social network? Um, I want to show you very briefly um, some of the possibilities that kids are working on on the site. Uh, here's one quick example that comes from Louisiana. Uh, at first we were working with teachers down there having kids tell stories about uh, animals and the culture that uh, they were losing because of the oil spill um, and then it became more about just uh, you know, what do I love about my culture here along the Gulf Coast so here's one example of a walk along Main Street this is a very typical assignment on youth verses come along with me and you will see the sights and sounds of the Queen City. You'll laugh and learn and knowledge you'll earn. Paddle your canoe down the bayou tash. Where the shadows rest, it is and always will be the best. So sweet as our sugar cane, it can't be found anywhere, not even in Maine. So good as our tobacco, it will cause a fiasco. I know you love our salt. If spilled, it won't be your fault. We were ruled by King Louis and Queen Anna. Welcome to New Iberia, Louisiana. Love that. And I really wish there was more time to show you some of the slides and conversations that now they let's had back even um, about their Main, Main Street. In the 1920s. You're anyway, that gives you some sense of what's possible here. Um, and if I go further this all I'll, I'll do and I'm trying to do something else here I'm trying to say <laughs> give some examples of social media in my life why do we do this and I want to emphasize that um, in the next couple of minutes I'm not promoting um, Google Plus or anything it doesn't matter about the platform it's more about why so this week I've been trying to learn um, about the Horn of Africa and the famine that's going on there. So um, first thing I did was uh, start reading. Uh, I started uh, picking up some things and, and looking and I, I got really interested in this notion of a pastoralist. Uh, what was a pastoralist? I said, uh, so I wrote, I want to learn more about these livestock owners who travel from place to place. How does that work? And the notion of agripastoralists uh, seems to imply that they do from form. At any rate, I, I asked some questions. I posed some things. I, I put out some paragraphs from an article that I had read that, that I thought was pretty interesting um, and that, that got me thinking about what's going on there on the Horn of Africa. And, perhaps Somalia in, in particular. Um, so one of the interesting things that happened was this this guy, um, Halbert, uh, emailed, or I, I, he didn't email, sorry. He, he um, commented on my post and suggested some other things that he was working on. So there's this chat back and forth about uh, Dungeons and Drag Dragons game that he works on. But here's here's the here's the most important part, point. Um, Chris Jacobson um, from Glenbrook South High School. Don't know Chris, but she's in my circles. Um, suggested that um, she said, "I'm glad that they propose solutions and that include agro 
pastoralists and pastoralists maintain their nomadic ways of life and their animals. Developing specialists should not be in the habit of trying to making uh, people abandon their cultures and economies. So thoughtful, quick comment she made. made and then she pointed us to um, Peter D. Little. And I quickly went there and found a really wonderful, wonderful article um, that outlines his work over the past 27 years there in um, the Horn of Africa and uh, some myths that are worth you know, paying attention to as we think about these issues. So I then posted about this. Um, so, um, and <laughs> got a really interesting response. So here's my post. I thanked the teacher and then found some quotes and said I was reading this and other people joined me in reading it and this guy Robert Patterson in particular um, had a quick interesting comment. He said, um, took, uh, no, he said, I have to come to the conclusion that pasture and not the plow may be the way forward. Polyface on steroids. Thanks for the link. Now, it took me a while to figure out this polyface on steroids, but then I remembered, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I remembered the omnivore's dilemma. I remembered um, that that was the name of Joel Salatin's farm in Virginia, which I then put a link to. And, um, oh, that didn't work. Uh, let's see what's wrong with that link. Um, and, um, and the movie Fresh and uh, so forth so it connected me back to something that i knew already and i think that's what's uh, so fascinating i know i'm way over time here but um please allow me just to, to mention um that uh as you can see i'm learning i'm connecting i'm i'm building my curriculum with other people people i vaguely know online they're helping me connect back to things that i knew already um, people pointed me eventually to this photo blog, which was kind of amazing. I just want to show you briefly um, where we can kind of see our, I don't know what to say, but flat footed response to um, this crisis and and sort of what's implied by some of the language if we had time to stop and look at it and he stops and he has us look at this one photograph and he says take a look at her smile the kind of hopeful here's my son's smile and the Reuters um, editor who collected this photograph also posted um, about his experience of uh, these photographs when they came in and um, he actually put up nine, or there were eight photographs. He put up four of them um, himself and then talked about his experience. Here's that original photograph we saw. And sadly, the boy, the baby passes away. You can see her grief grow and um, it becomes a very sad um, kind of very emotional connection that this makes. Um, for all of us, I think, as we look at it. So, um, doing this inquiry on very many different levels, as you can see. Um, while I was doing this, um, I had a, 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 a young man uh, who just graduated in June um, send me a message on Facebook, and he said, saying hi to the best English teacher of, um, ever. I am very sad that next year I won't be able to sit in your classroom and work on Youth Voices projects. Um, I asked him about what he's doing in the summer. Fascinating. Some of it's out doing oceanography. Some of it's in a classroom studying Chinese. Um, and other of it is in, uh, he's working, what was it, from 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock clock doing one hour lessons online so a very blended kind of experience he's having at hunter college already um, fascinating to think about and i am going to finish this but i just want to give you a sense of what my life is like because of all of this online work i posted was uh, loving his response and what i was learning from it and i posted that up and within 10 minutes i got this um 
note from Valerie Burton, who happens to be a teacher in um, just outside of New Orleans in Louisiana. And she wrote, I'm interested in participating in Youth Voices this year with my ninth grade English class. I, I don't see where to get any additional information. What should I do? And so I said, we'd love for you to join us. Please join us um, and uh, come join us on Teachers Teaching Teachers. And that night she showed up on Teachers Teaching Teachers. We uh, were in a hangout here on Google um, Plus and uh, we recorded it and we'll put that up as a podcast. And, and more importantly, we'll be working with her students um, this fall around all this so those are some of the ways that i connect and the reasons i want kids to connect it's about emotional intellectual academic learning you know i was connected with a professor and we may be talking with him i'm reading some of his stuff if i had time to show you i'd show you lots of other connections and reading that i've been doing to prepare curriculum around the Horn of Africa, a, a topic which I've become very deeply committed to in, not, in no short um, reason because of that photo blog from the Horn of Africa that showed that uh, mother. And so helping my students make all of these connections is what we hope Youth Voices is all about. And um, I, you can imagine there's plenty, plenty, plenty there, there for us to think about. There is always more. How do we develop the curriculum together? How do we um, promote kids' work? How do we keep them connected? How do we have them respond to each other? How do we keep building the community? And how do we make the software work as well as we'd like it to work? Those are some of the questions I'd like to explore with uh, um, this, this fall. Uh, thank you for giving me this time. I realize I'm 12 minutes here, but all right.